Today is the 107th anniversary of Boy Scouting in the United States, and we're going to celebrate that with the old Disney movie from 1966 called Follow Me Boys, which is one of the few, if not the only movie to ever use actual Boy Scout insignia and such. So, being that Boy Scouts is also a hot topic in the news because they just changed their membership policy, I have with me a current Boy Scout to discuss this movie. So, let's chat! Hi, what do you want to talk about first? Well, I think the most obvious thing to talk about is how you thought that movie presented Boy Scouts in general. It presented them really good uh, back in the old days of Boy Scouts, where, like, as in the beginning, they were building the canoe and such other things, like... All right, we should probably do a timeout and note that the movie is from 1966, but it actually starts out in the 30s, uh, maybe 1932, maybe a little bit earlier than that, and it goes through 1950. So this is, like, really original, old-school Boy Scouts. And it follows the adventures of... <laughs> Lemuel... <laughs> How did they say the last name? I know it looks like Sidon, but I think he said, like, Sidon. Sidon? Yeah, Liminal Sidon. Yeah, he put in at least 18 years with the Boy Scouts that it told us specifically through the dates, and we don't even know how many before or after that. He basically was a Scoutmaster until they made the title of Scoutmaster Emeritus because he didn't want to retire, but his health made him retire. So I'm not really clear myself what Emeritus means in terms of Boy Scouts, but I'm sure other people watching this do. So, Boy Scout, how do you feel that this movie showed Boy Scouts versus how it actually is today? Well, I can't really truly say because that was old Boy Scouts and, well, nowadays it's more modern. So, from the movie, I feel like they might have over-exaggerated some stuff, like when they built the whole cabin. Like, I feel like that might not have happened during the old times. Well, you have to remember, as time has gone on, they've added on regulations yeah. because of lawsuits. So one kid loses his hand to a power saw, now you can't build your own house anymore. True. Which is kind of why a lot of Boy Scout stuff is, like, more meetings type, like, discussing about stuff. Well, I will say, because I volunteered with Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, 4-H, on and on and on and on, that there are a lot of things the Boy Scouts gets to do. Like you get to do a lot of different merit badge types and a lot of different like uh, troop trips that the Girl Scouts would never be allowed to do. They would never get approved for no matter what their age is. So why don't you tell us some of the things that you have done as a Boy Scout trip wise and how, you know, how that's different from what they're doing in this movie. Because like you said, well, I don't think they would build a house. So what do you do as a Boy Scout today? Modern trips now take like buses or cars because it... <laughs> they had cars then too, you know? Yeah, but if you notice when they went to the camp out, they said they hiked like 12 miles to get there. So... Well, how far away did you camp when you went to... Uh, or how far away did you hike when you went to camp? Because I know you said it took you guys forever to get to your designated spot. Well, that was probably in just my opinion because I've never really hiked that long. Because it was probably like maybe a mile or a half. Oh my god. <laughs> You're right. Boy Scouts today is very different if a mile is killing you and these kids are doing 12 mile hikes like no sweat. Hey, I was holding heavy stuff. So were they! They brought the whole supplies to build a whole cabin! But that was just up the mountain. And it was a mountain. That you went to? Yeah. So you guys hiked uphill? Yeah, and we stayed there for like 10 minutes. It was not worth it. Well, yeah, it's harder, but isn't that part of the perseverance side? What is the scout law exactly? Can you say that for me? I know they kind of went over that very briefly in the movie, but I think it's the same. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Yeah, it sounded like the part that they did say in the movie was the same. Um, oh, did you notice that the uh, rank was kind of different, or at least the badge type for the rank? Um, vaguely, because I couldn't really see them that well. Yeah, they looked like they were squares instead yeah. of the ovals, and it looked like maybe, I don't know, it seemed like we only saw first class ranks, so 
I don't know if there's any Boy Scout historians out there. Did the 1930s through 50s have the lower ranks or did you have to get to like first class before you got your first badge or your well, first it, rank badge? Well, if you think about it, it's like when you started out in Boy Scouts, you automatically got on Scout from what I was told. But since they ke- kept on updating it over and over, over, it's probably a bit harder to get ranks now than it was back then. So Yeah, it seemed like they had uh, that first kind of big camping scene where they were repairing the canoe and everybody was just like okay you're working on second class you're working on tenderfoot you're working on you know first class rank and all that and they only mentioned eagle scout one time which makes me think that even back then it was a huge ordeal to earn it there's only five percent of boy scouts that get to become eagle scouts is that true yeah where did you hear that like, I read it somewhere. It's like, yeah, only 5% of Boy Scouts really go on to be Eagle Scouts. Why would you say that is? Well, probably some would age out or they couldn't complete it. Like, they probably had a couple of merit badges they couldn't finish and they never got to finish. So, it could be many reasons. And you've been a Boy Scout for how long? Um, A year or two. So then you haven't been in long enough to really get a lot of perspective on why the older boys might quit before they get Eagle, but have you noticed anything in your scouting time? Well, I have seen that before because I remember in one of my old troops, right after a camp out, a kid, like, never came back, so... You know what I thought was really interesting about Follow Me Boys was that they still had that one kid off to the side who for the first like half of the movie was making fun of the Boy Scouts. Yeah, that was strange. I think it's pretty accurate. I I mean, uh, I remember my cousin, he was a Boy Scout all throughout school and he was one of them that aged out of it when he turned 18. And he was always made fun of in school. And they said, no, Scouts are for girls, ha ha ha, and laughed at him and, and you know, just made fun of him a lot. Have you had that experience? Because you've been in since you were a cub. No, I haven't really because the topic of scouting's never really come up in school and I don't brag about it, so. <laughs> so <laughs> you've got a don't ask, don't tell policy. <laughs> Basically. Oh, you know, I thought it was kind of neat, too, that when they had the town meeting and they were trying to find something to do with the boys, the um, lady, was it Vida, Vida, Ida, something like that. Vida. <laughs> some, some some odd, peculiar name we don't use much today. Uh, she wrote down YMCA, 4-H, and Boy Scouts. And that's really probably the three biggest, most well-known programs for children today, even. I mean, you could probably throw the Boys and Girls Club in there now, maybe Big Brothers, Big Sisters. But I'd say the biggest, most well-known three would still be YMCA, 4-H, and Boy Scouts. Yeah, I could probably agree to that. Well, if you notice, the only reason they weren't doing Boy Scouts is because no one wanted to volunteer. That doesn't really happen too much nowadays because... Oh no, there's still a lot of problems getting volunteers and getting good volunteers that will actually dedicate... I mean, there's a reason they named a camp after Mr. Lim here because people do not dedicate like that like they used to and even then i thought that was a good point too that even back then people are saying oh no i'm much too busy to handle this and well didn't he like just move there when he volunteered for it yeah he just moved there he was the new guy in town he was trying to get the girl and impress the girl and that's basically why it suggested he volunteered and it's kind of funny because it's the same way now where getting the volunteers is like pulling teeth so much so that a lot of the areas councils what have you they won't even get rid of a bad leader if they're reported and they will hardly investigate anything unless it involves child endangerment But even today, I mean, I know I've had issues in Girl Scouts where I've reported theft of Girl Scout funds from the troop, and the council basically gave me the attitude of, well, we got our money, so whatever happens to the girl's end of the money is your own problem. And so we still have the same problem today where getting the good volunteers is really like 90% of the battle. Like, the program is good, the program is solid, it's getting the adults to commit to it. Yeah. Because especially in a small town where the movie was based off of, it could be really hard. Well, and that's why they said that in Hickory, where were they? I I don't even know what state they were in. I think it was Illinois. I I don't know that they ever noted that. Louisiana or Illinois, I think. it It was some small Midwestern kind of state, and 
Yeah, they had brought up getting a Boy Scout troop over and over again. The only problem was nobody wanted to volunteer. So PSA, if you are a decent person and not a dirtbag and you are over the age of 18, please consider going and volunteering with Boy Scouts or a similar organization because there are kids out there that need people to care about them and need people to depend on. And unfortunately, a lot of the volunteers that we see do not keep that kind of commitment at least in my experience, <laughs> because there have been times over and over again, especially with Girl Scouts, that I have gone in and been the only volunteer that's actually taken the training that's required, quote unquote. Oh, merit badges. What? Yes. How did you think of how the merit badges were presented in Follow Me Boys? One of the only merit badges I think they really talked about was the canoeing one, and that was for, like, one scene where they were pushing the canoe. I think they briefly mentioned first aid, too. Yeah. I feel like it's not too far off, but those were only two merit badges, so it's hard to say. Yeah, I know Boy Scouts has had a bunch of merit badges sort of come and go over the years, and a lot of them that have stayed consistent, like first aid and canoeing, they're still around. I wish they would have shown more. Like, I don't think they showed one badge sash in the entire movie. Like, I would have liked to have seen what the boys were earning. Yeah, that would have been nice because then it'd show, like, how they're improving. And then you'd have the uh, comparison, too, that you could see it today and go, oh, wow, that looks nothing like it does anymore. Like, it looks completely different now. Yeah. Oh, you know what I did notice <laughs> is, is that even back then, the first original group of kids he had, they wore the bandanas over top of their collars, and you were in a troop like that. So why don't you explain for us why that was being done? Well, I think it was being done because there was a lot of use for uses for the handkerchief, like a lot, because uh, I know if someone's got a broken leg, like they'll make a splint, which is like helps you walk a little better with a broken leg and they'll use those to tie it on sometimes. What did you think about the scene where that one kid fell off the cliff <laughs> like an idiot and they like the whitey tied himself up and they lowered him down to go get the kid off the cliff? That is a good way to do it but is that something that you have ever seen or been trained for or would expect to see any of the kids in your troop do now? See a kid fall down a cliff and then save him. No, I have not seen that demonstrated at all. Could you see it, though, feasibly happening? Do you feel like you've had enough training to be able to think that quickly on your feet? Uh, Probably, because the way they did it, it wouldn't be too hard if like there's a tree or something nearby that's sturdy enough. So if somebody fell... You would tie yourself up. You'd be right down there. You'd be, the, you'd be volunteering as tribute. Me, probably not. I, I'd be more scared than the kid on the cliff. You, you'd be the one down the cliff. Yeah, I'm honest. the one on a rope. You're my child. We're not unrealistic about our expectations in this house. I'm the one on a thin rope. He's the one being saved here. I'm going to be scared. Follow me, boys, follow me. Yeah, you mentioned a good point a few minutes ago. You said uh, it's not very realistic for the scoutmaster to sing and everybody to sing with him when they're marching so you guys don't do any songs in your boy scouting experience well i have seen troops who do a lot uh like i've gone to like one well a couple big campouts and i'd usually see a good chunk of troops that would sing while they march so then it's not that it's out of place it's just not normal to you yeah so there could be all kinds of troops making up songs today. You don't even you don't even know. Yeah. All right. Well, finding a BSA songbook should be in your future. That's my belief. Actually, a uh, fun fact: the digital technology merit badge and the radio merit badge have a secret code to where it spells out BSA because I think the radio one is in Morse code. And there's not really any theory or odd goings on in Follow Me Boys. It's just a nice topic to talk about for the Boy Scouting anniversary. So we're going to kind of start wrapping it up here. And why don't you tell everybody, just for fun, all the merit badges you have earned so far. And first, what rank are you? Uh, I am a tenderfoot trying to go to second class. And the merit badges I have earned are, I think in order, space exploration, leather work, First aid, horsemanship, 
emergency preparedness, citizenship in the community, citizenship in the nation, citizenship in the world, communications, family life, robotics, composite materials, salesmanship, personal fitness, and engineering. And then you've also got two you're still working on with environmental science and digital technology. Is that right? Yes. What would you say out of all those badges that you've done, what is your favorite and what is your least favorite or the hardest to get or whatever? Uh, My favorite would be space exploration. And that was most fun because I got to build a rocket and launch it up a couple of times. And my least favorite is citizenship in the community, citizenship in the nation, and citizenship in the world. <laughs> All three of them were awful. Yeah. <laughs> so why why was that? Give us some more details. It, those are required, though, to make Eagle Scout rank. So it's like yeah. it's something you have to do since you plan on being committed long term to Scouts, right? Yes. Okay, what's your dream merit badge that you haven't gotten to go after yet? Archery is one I do want to get really fast because I, I've done archery and it's not that hard to me. All right, well, we'll take our final moments of this video and I'm going to let you do a PSA for BSA. Tell people why they should join Boy Scouts. What is the appeal? What makes it awesome? Boy Scouts is really fun and I'd say you should join it, but... There is a lot of things you should look out for, like troops. There's not always perfect, good troops. There are some troops that are bad. That That is actually a really good point that I want to help you touch on there because in Boy Scouts, you're kind of more encouraged to visit and explore different troops and find the one that works in the way that's best for you. In Girl Scouts, it's not that way. They say, here's a list of troops online, pick one and go with it. They they do not have the same kind of quality control in Girl Scouts. So it's really important to think about where you're going, to know who you're going with, and to see if they are aligning with your goals. Like, it doesn't really matter if there is a friend in there, because if the troop is still bad, it's still bad even and your friend could quit you don't even yeah. know like you could join because your friends over there and six months later they move or they've left scouting yeah which a lot of people drop out for sports yeah which could suck and then most likely either you stay at the troop because you said you'd be there or you move on to a different troop okay but what makes it great what makes it fun let's get on the positive side well, what makes it great and fun is well, I'd have to say the campouts. The campouts are probably the most fun. Cause... I'm surprised you say that because I really never saw you as a camping out kid before you crossed over to Boy Scouts. Like all through Cub Scouts, you never had an interest in camping at all. Well, that's because I never went camping when I was a Cub Scout. Because Cub Scout is more, uh, let's do this little activity inside. Boy Scouts is like, let's go camping, skiing, all of this, and mountain hiking. So it can be really fun. Well, thanks, Bash, for helping me host this Let's Chat, and I hope it's been fun and informative for all of you. I swear there will be more theories and stuff coming. This was just a nice little break for today. And if you are interested in joining scouting or volunteering with the Boy Scouts, you can find all the information you want with a quick Google search for the Boy Scout website. I don't know if it's bsa.org or boyscouts.org or Boy Scouts of America. It's one of those websites like that. I'll just put a link in the description instead of rambling like an idiot anymore. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed enough to like, subscribe, and share this video. I've also got a lot of other videos on my channel that you are fully encouraged to go check out. Plus, you can find me on Facebook at Say Halo Goodbye, which is my gamer tag, or Twitter at the underscore fanily.